wow. Yeah, just picked her up. Oh, good fuel economy in this thing? Nah. Big engine bay must have a fair bit of horsepower. None. Enough room for the family, it's just... <laughs> nah, not a chance. It's pretty hot in here. Nope. Cruise control? No. Power windows? Or... Nope, doesn't even go down. Airbags? Any safety options? <laughs> Roadworthy? Well, it did once in its life. Oh, I guess you would have got a pretty good deal though. No, nope. I paid five times what it's worth. I can really see why you bought it, yeah. We are officially starting the K20 build. Alright, let's go, dude. And it's gonna be Mammon. That is a 6.7 Cummins. And I've gone and picked up an 8 speed. <laughs> and a state of the art drive chain. Yeah, look, that blade's real blunt. That didn't work at all. <laughs> this is no easy task. Oh, I am the brains of the operation. <laughs> That's what I tell everyone anyway. Right? Yeah. Get ready for our most anticipated build series yet. Let's get started. Really didn't think this one through. What if I can fire it up and drive it in? It's a motor. In the UK they call them a motor. I'll get the power jack, eh? <laughs> Your neighbours uh, think you're so strange. Oh, I know, the weirdest. They're like, what is this weird dude doing now? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming to help. Well, I'm gonna need a hand getting it up the driveway. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be this thing is so heavy. You're a legend, make sure you hit the like button too. Are you, are you making a YouTube video? We are. <laughs> Alright, let's go do that. Man, you're strong. Jesus. How much is it weight? You got some real strength. It's 530 kilos. Oh, that's why it's light, yeah. Oh. <laughs> it could be that winch that it's connected it, to. It could be the winch, yeah. <laughs> you would, see, this is why you have TJ around. He works smarter, not harder. That, yeah. That actually looks pretty funny, eh? <laughs> Where there's a will, there's a way. Soft shackle down. Oh, a bit of That's rated, isn't it? Yeah, from our, our back equipment, TJ Jack 5 Tough Terrain uh, Soft Shackle. For when you need to winch your motor up the driveway. <laughs> <laughs> You're extremely heavy engine up the driveway. Finally, Macca, get to start the big rig. Like, I've been waiting a long time, but I think everyone has. I think I've waited the longest because I've had this thing for, geez, I reckon coming up for two years. I'm excited to say we're finally getting stuck into the body, the engine, and the chassis. So am I right to say the engine has to go in before we do all the chassis? 100%. Work, because you need to go around it, brace everything, get weights, yep. position, yep. all the stuff. All the stuff, and then make everything work around that engine, okay. because last thing you want to do is build all your suspension, your engine, cross member and everything, and then find out it doesn't fit. Yeah, so, don't want that. going with the engine first, we might even try and get it running first, uh, still on the leaf springs before we start going into the coilovers and new diffs, eh? Body is staying original, I'm gonna fix a bit of rust, not too much, not gonna go overboard. Bush basher. This is the bush basher, staying patina. I'm considering purchasing a whole nother body. So you'll get that looking real nice. Get it on the side. The vehicle. Yeah. And then when ready, swap, swap her over. On and we'll have a show car. Yeah, but I mean, we're gonna bash this one up first, so. Yeah, <laughs> gonna do some hard wheeling, cause you're gonna have the hard wheeling suspension. Oh, 100%. Crazy. Crazy stuff going on. Big heavy diffs. It's yeah. Got to handle the silly amount of torque that that coming 6.7 is going to push out. So. Oh, it's so exciting. No, I'm actually really pumped. I really want to get this thing started because it's like, you guys would have seen my old C10. If not here, it is probably here right now, looking at it, doing burnouts and cool stuff. One of the biggest project cars I had ever done and definitely the best build I've ever done to date. That thing was immaculate. Max seems to think this is a four month project. <laughs> We're at two yeah, years, yeah, but that doesn't count. Let's start the counter now. Yeah, right. Well, I, I guess. I reckon 12 months is optimistic. I mean, it, it's still driving at the moment, so that's the, it hasn't started. Oh. It... Welcome back, team. As you can see, the drill and tap set has come out. Tash saw it and realised that's never a good sign. She's jumped on a plane with Zalia and she's headed to Melbourne. <laughs> I've gained some time, put it that way. For all the dads out there, they know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> Power steering bottle was broken on the bottom and it's a bolt-in sort of press fit on an O-ring to stop it leaking. Because of that, and I don't have one of these and I can't be bothered waiting, I've decided I'm gonna put in, and it's gonna look a lot neater, I'm gonna put in a remote reservoir for the power steering fluid. So 
ordered one of them from Raceworks. It's a 16 mil hull. It's supposed to have a 16.5 mil hull for an M18 1.5. Basically plenty of cutting fluid is a good thing. Turn it in just like you're doing up a bolt, but if it gets sort of firm, just back it off a little bit and then go again. That just sort of clears the teeth out. This is a starting tap and then I'm gonna go with a finishing tap. Drill your hole first, but this is an existing hole, so I'm just going straight in with the tap. This is our AN thread tester from Raceworks. Cool handy dandy case, give that a go there. Oh, look at that, straight in. Oh, that's perfect, that's heaps of threads too, so that's fantastic, guys. You know when you just pull off a good drill and tap? and it just, you're just stoked that it's worked. I just had that moment. Because when the drill and tap set comes out, it's normally a really, really bad time. Charts on Google that'll tell you the correct drill size to tap size. Don't just go, oh yeah, 16 mil drill hole, 16 mil tap, it's completely different. So that's another tip for you guys. But I've gone and picked up an eight speed. <laughs> Woohoo! That is a 80 series transfer case. It's gutted, there's nothing in it. This is an eight-speed gearbox. It currently has the converter in it and an output shaft. This is gonna to bolt to the engine. So this actually bolts, where are we? Then this part is gonna to bolt to that. They'll probably all bolt through each other. And then this part bolts to the engine. So in between that we have <laughs> the flywheel. Torque converter will bolt to this, so this will have another adapter. Basically, this bolts to the crank, another adapter plate bolts to this, and then that bolts to the converter. Seems to be the easiest, fastest way to do it. I'm pretty excited. The adapter plate that boys have made is awesome. We've got the rear adapter plate, something like that. Bolts onto the back, which then picks up from there. 80 series or 79 series. 79 series is the stronger case, uh, stronger transfer case. So I'll probably run a 79 series one, but we're gonna bolt this up for dummy purposes. This is an 80 series one. I believe they're same bolt pattern, same shape, sort of stuff, just not as good as the 79. They got different linkages and things. Thanks heaps to the 8 speed boys for getting me all this gear to dummy it up and make some mounts up, basically. It's pretty exciting. Oh, also, a lot of people asking, how big is it? 624 mil from here to here. So they're a pretty small box. It's very impressive. Now that I've finished painting the back of the block, I need to start stripping a lot of this. I've already done a lot of the other side. So turbo's coming off. Uh, all this manifold gear is coming off. That's coming off. Okay guys, I just want to quickly talk about the importance of labeling things. Under fuel pump, under fuel pump, crank sensor, crank sensor, ECU bolts and earth bolts. Very important to label stuff guys, very, very, very important. Our good friend Simo is back from overseas. How long were you over there for mate? Uh, four and a half years. In Canada? Yeah. Loved it? Yeah, yeah, good, good for the most part. Yeah, but you're back, mate, you're back. Yeah, back for good. <laughs> he's single too, ladies. Uh, before he goes back to work, he's got some time, so he's coming to give me a hand on the K truck. Yeah, rad removal, clean up the front and in front of the motor so we can check some clearances and then get rid of all this shit house wiring. Yeah, there's plenty of it. What's really weird is a small block Chevy needs like three wires and a run, you know? <laughs> there seems to be wiring everywhere, relays everywhere. It's just, Simo has built a, what was your F truck? What year? Uh, 55. 55 F100, it's very cool. He is a plumber by trade, and much like myself, has a massive passion for cars. Hopefully have the truck out of the garage in the next couple of weeks. It's been there for four and a half years. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> we thought it was a remote oil filter, but it, actually is filtering the coolant. It's a, yeah, it's attached to the heating line. Yeah, it's a coolant filter. So you could probably drink your coolant if you had to. <laughs> <laughs> They've done some weird stuff to this. Yeah, we'll see what else we find during the deconstruction of the K truck. I think it goes that way. We'll find out. Nah, I'm gonna say it goes this way. Heaps can't go that way. Must go this way. 
You gotta have a lake to fix a lake. <laughs> That's right. This is my this is my jam. This is called working smarter, not harder. I'm all about it. Another 50 mil. It's alright, we can shock her up. Boop! Oh, that's fantastic. It looks like an oil filter, but yeah, it's plumbed in the cooling system. And you can just turn the valves off to replace it. That. Without it, losing any fluid. That's loose. I know. <laughs> what? The, I just don't understand why. All right, all right. Let me know in the comments, why do you need a filter for your coolant? Like, it's that cheap. If it's gone dirty, you just replace it, I would have thought, but. Or we're missing something here in Australia, like. Yeah, <laughs> we, maybe Australia's behind the times. And you have taken the option that I always take when working in this engine bay. <laughs> just get inside it. You can sit in the engine bay while you're working on the engine. <laughs> Legit, these things are so big. It's gonna be even more room when there's a straight six in there. And exactly, not a... there's a little seat in here, mate. Yeah, <laughs> that's, I'll put the king chrome seat in there. Yeah. Oh no. Need a socket? <laughs> you know when you get to the end and then it grabs in your fingers? Nice. Ah. Nice. Oh, oh. And I obviously wired in the uh, indicators. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Little update where we're up to, it's now night time. Yeah. And uh, the 8 speed, that is a dummy 80 series transfer. But the 8 speed's all bolted up and measurements are taken for the flywheel to um, converter adapter. <laughs> now I'm doing all of the steering, not all of the steering, the steering linkage here. And I am working on removing the cowling and guard bolts so that we can hopefully walk the whole front end off. I'm on the glass goldies, so keep, keeping it classy, you know? Well, yeah. <laughs> Tastes good out of a bottle, eh? I don't know why. Maybe because I've had tins for so long. We found more chains. There's one down here. So there's another chain in here down in the chassis well area. So we believe this was bolted to the engine because it torque twists so much. Because So much torque. The chassis twisted coming off the line. Need to ch chain it down to the chassis, so. Thanks, Pecky, for filming too. <laughs> should I cut it or should I keep it? You don't really need an aerial, do you? Yeah. That was really good, but I get it. Like, does, does that mean cut it? Or does it mean like, cut? Yeah, N C, yeah. Ah, uh, N C. Wow, it's so strong. Big strong Aussie boy. Radiator's out, front end's out. Well, bolts are out of the front end. We're gonna launch the bloody bonnet off, get rid of that. Then we're gonna try and walk this whole front end off, basically, so. The first go and it's gonna go really well with just the two of us and we're not gonna do our backs. There's gonna be minimal swearing. <laughs> <Woo -hoo. Yes. laughs> no dangly bits. Yeah, what a win. Okay, I think I've been watching too much uh, American guys building cars because they seem to just love using this thing and I'm gonna give it a crack so yeah look that blade's real blunt that didn't work at all <laughs> Really old fuel tanks, they are empty, but we're still a little cautious. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, so. I like my eyebrows where they are, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we put water in them <laughs> and uh, cut the bolts off that are on the bottom. There's like a bolt where it's all the way through and we're very carefully removing these without causing any sparks to cause a flame to blow us up. Of course, safety first. Safety first. This on the traddy jack, anything could happen here. It's <laughs> yeah. two bolts, we're gonna rip them out. Oh. Yeah, leak there. Oh, the old gearbox oil. Oh, hey, we're getting near the end. Lucky we put the big bucket under it. Oh, oh, shit. That's it. Big cast heavy donk. So we're about to test the uh, 
tensile strength of anything we've left connected in this as well now. It's the plus we're using, this is a piece of seat belt. I don't have a chain, I don't know where the hell it's gone. I normally have a chain and de-shackles and rated lifting points. And now Simo, it's 4.30. We've got to go to the pub again at six. Uh, yeah, yeah, we get a full day. You reckon we'll get this out? Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm feeling confident. You reckon first go, eh? We got the balance really good. Is that even off the j Wow. Oh yeah. Oh, Ooh, fucking Jesus. Jesus. Huh? Oh, it's a starter motor. So I need to go higher. Oh, we're out. I ran all the engineer calcs and said if we put the straps there and there, it's going to be perfectly balanced. Voila! If you lend Pecky, your engine crane doesn't come back with the jack pole. A king chrome breaker bar fits perfect in there. Dan arrives with beers. <laughs> he is the man of the hour because we're about to design some cross members, chassis plates and a whole lot of metal stuff because he's laser man Dan. Come on, get a bit more excited, mate. Oh, what do I need to do? <laughs> what, what are we going to do? Let's, let's go through it. Let's I decide what we're going to do. I know not everyone has access to a laser cutter, so I am extremely grateful to have Dan in my life. But <laughs> we're going to go through, design some stuff, and you'll eventually see it on the car when I dime bags it in. All right, feeling strong? Oh, jeez. Okay. I didn't think this was going to come off today. Ah, uh, no. Huh? Did you get done? Luckily, we put gloves on. <laughs> well, we are borderline on the limit of what this thing can do. <laughs> the Unimig plasma cutter. <laughs> and their latest helmet, which I'm more excited about, believe it or not. How cool is that? I really like it. <laughs> That's really fun. Oh, I want to cut heaps more stuff. Okie dokie. That should hold up. The front engine cross member. We've cut out the cross member in front of that. So unbolted, it actually bolts in. Plasma cutter is awesome. Holy shit, inbuilt air compressor, it's literally turned it on and cut. That was sick. So yeah, we welded a couple of supports in just to stop the chassis splitting sideways and uh, we've got the engine where we want it. Okay, we're running. Back about two or three degrees there. And... Same, about the same up there on the rock cover. Left to right zero. So we've used a strap on the front here to, to pull the engine that way. We want enough clearance for the diff to the sump, which isn't an issue either. Now Dan's gonna work his wonderful magic <laughs> and do some design work for some engine mounts. It's very exciting. I'm pretty pumped to see it in, to be honest. Um, be even better when it's actually in and bolted, but yeah. Oh, I am the brains of the operation. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I tell everyone anyway. Yeah, yeah, I hope not, I hope not it works watching. <laughs> <laughs> just gonna whip down the Dan's and um, laser cut some engine mounts out. <laughs> Rest in peace, GoPro. Enjoyed Sky out in heaven. <laughs> We're back. How you been going, Simo? Yeah, good mate. Yeah? Good mate. Bit of housekeeping, bit of grinding. Oh, nice. Simo has prepped up all the steel work, got everything all nice and so that we have a nice surface to weld to. We've laser cut some eight mil engine mounts. We only need these at the moment because we're gonna box in the whole chassis and gusset the tops and you guys will see later. But basically, we're gonna strengthen the hell out of everything because this engine's gonna be an absolute torque monster. Tomorrow, we can build the turbo setup. Why didn't this 1969 K20 come out with the 2008 Dodge Ram engine? Beats me. 
Oh. Okay, so what I'm doing here is cutting out cardboard templates of what we've laser cut. We made these oversized so that we can just trim back what we need because the front and rear plate is two different lengths. But yeah, we can pretty much like bolt the cardboard through. It's pretty close. How about now? Can you stop moving it? Oh, sorry, hold on. <laughs> How about now? The front's, the other front's good. Nah, too far? Mate, and you're the one who's gonna be driving this road with. <laughs> I'll double check the back and then I'll hold it while you eat. <laughs> Up to you right now. <laughs> it's not going back after this. We do have a little bit of wiggle room up and down at the moment. Well, nah, because I've already cut the engine mounts. Oh. oh, that's where it's sitting then. I think that's where it's going. Yeah. Man, I love this new welding helmet. It's so good. With that? I think so, yeah. Cool. And then we might have to just cut that off. We get you want. I don't think it does anything. Either. I mean, I know it's resting on it right now, but it's kind of. Nice. Ah, hot. I think, is this day four, Simo? Yeah. yeah. Three and a half, day three and a half. Burning these engine mounts. Don't stress, I am chassis played in the inside and outside. Did a post, a couple of people chimed in. Oh, that'll break. So, I'm not done yet. <laughs> Frothing this new Unimig um, helmet, it's bloody badass. But next K truck episode, we've got twin compound turbos going on it with the K's and Fab Boys. Keen is an understatement. That's better, a bit more Y speed was nice. That ain't going nowhere, Simo. Imagine if the leaf spring just like snapped. <laughs> um, so we're a little worried, because we don't have the gearbox mount and gearbox in, the engine can fall front and back depending what the weight's doing. So we'll see what it does first day. She's rolling a lot, too much. Okay, so she's rolling forward, which we had a feeling was gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Alright, we're off the crane. She's looking good. How exciting. We got some little dodginess going on here, just holding the tilt of the engine, but we're unhooking. We're unhooked. Crane free. Crane is out. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Stop it. Get rid of all these straps and make it look pretty and she's out. Oh, exciting moment. You're about to see these boys on the next episode, but <laughs> just in time to see it's in. Woohoo! All right, guys. She's in. It's in. Massive thanks to Simo. Bloody great, mate. You're welcome. Pretty pumped. We've got, obviously, the, the engine sort of leaning down a bit at the front. There's a lot of weight. Once gearbox mounts all sorted out, she's going to be gravy. It'll be sitting hunky-dory. Now we get to pull it back out and start plating all the chassis up. Next episode, we're gonna stuck into the turbo setup for this. Uh, it's a very spicy one. <laughs> Got the K's and Fab Boys, Mitch and Nick coming up. Yeah, they are the absolute wizards. So stay tuned next week. Might not be next week. <laughs>